is to solve for the missing angles and sides. Sorry about that. Um, so in case you can see that we have one missing angle and we have two missing sides. All right. Now, unfortunately, we can't apply Pythagorean theorem or our trigonometric property because we don't have a right angle. Right? We have an oblique triangle. So one thing that we're going to use is what we call the law of sines. Now, to use the law of sines, though, we have to have a ratio, which I'll explain in just a second. But one of the first things I want you guys to look at, too, when we talk about geometry, I, you know, I, my geometry students a lot of times are still forgetful because um, they're just learning it as far as the, the sum of all the angles in a triangle, which Megan add up to 180, right? So in this case, you guys can see, well, I can fairly easily find the angle B, right? Find the measure of angle B? What? B. B, yeah, OK. Well, I'm just going to set up an equation just, just so you guys can see. Right? Right, so. Well, we don't always necessarily, let's just go through. I mean, obviously, this triangle, yeah, you can see 108. That's not going to be an acute angle, right? So the triangle is a little bit off, right? I'm acute. And so I'll show you what you can look at. But if I go ahead and add these up to, this is going to be 72 degrees plus b equals 180 degrees, right? Subtract 72 degrees, subtract 72 degrees, b equals 108 degrees. So yeah, you can say, oh, well, that's not really correct. So you know, if you wanted to redraw the triangle, because it doesn't make sense, maybe you do something like that. OK, I didn't know what the triangle looked like. I'm just giving the information. I just drew a triangle, and I was just provided the information. So that's what I plugged in. So let's, that's fine. We can go ahead and now just label everything like that. OK, but now we at least know, OK, so now we have a, uh, now what we have is we have a obtuse um, oblique triangle. And what we want to do is, well, how are we going to find these side lengths if we can't use Pythagorean theorem? So or our trigonometric identity. So one of the things that we're going to use is what we call the law of sines. And the law of sines can be simply written as proportions of the side length A divided by the sine of the angle A. And that's equal to the ratio of the side length B over the sine of B, which is also equal to the side length C over the sine of C. Now, when solving one of these, you only need a proportion. We don't solve when we have two equation signs. So all I want you guys to understand is the ratio between the side length and the sine of its angle is equivalent for all the angles and their side lengths. All right? However, to solve using law of sines, we only need one. All right? So in this case, here's what we have. Right. Um, so now, when, we're, when you're looking into solving the law of sines, you've got to make sure you have a ratio, or at least a ratio that is solved. In this case, we have, bless you, in this case, you can see that B, which is 108 degrees, you can see that we have B, 108 degrees, and its side length, right? So we have a ratio. We have one of these ratios. So now I can use that to solve. So I say B, which is 27.5, over the sine of 108. All right. Now, we know angle A and angle C, but we need to be able to solve for A and C. So it doesn't matter which one you want to do first. Caroline, what would you like to solve for first, A or C? C. C, OK. So then I'll set this equal to C. And then I'll say C. We don't know the length of C, but we do know the sine of the angle C, which will be the sine of 48 degrees. Now, finally, since you guys have done proportions in um, algebra 1 and Algebra 2, you guys can go back to cross multiplication. Um, so, so many of you remember, oh, multiplying fractions, cross multiply, no, 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 no. We only use cross multiplication. Um, Kobe, I'll give you one warning, put it back on top of your desk. The next time I'll just have to take it away from you. Um, so, the next thing, um, so now we get to go ahead and apply cross multiplication. If you guys remember the cross multiplication, go over here. And there. All right? So I'll work out the first one for you. But then from now on, I'm going to kind of do it um, in one step. But I'll do this step by step. So we multiply across. So that's 27.5 times the sine of 48 equals um, C times the sine of 108. Well, again, we're trying to solve for our variable C. So I'll divide by sine of 108. All 
All right? So therefore, I can say c equals 27.5 times the sine of 48 degrees all over the sine of 108 degrees. Does everybody see what I did there? Okay. So now, to solve this, or to find actually our value of c, I'm simply just going to take 27.5, multiply it by the sine of 48, and divide that by the sine of 108. And what you guys will get is 21.49 as you round it. So c equals 21.49. Okay? And always make sure, guys, when you're pl plugging those values in, you know, sometimes you might accidentally have your calculator in radians, um, or you accidentally typed in the wrong number, and you might get a value that's not going to make sense, right? If you had a side length that was like 2,000, you know you did something wrong, right? But does this look like that would fit for that triangle? Yes? Yes, it does. So that one's 21.49, and now we need to solve for A. So to do for A, I'm going to do the exact same thing. We already know what b is. I'll just take our a. So a, we don't know the side length a. But we do know the sine of a, which is 24 degrees. OK, so now I'll do cross multiplication again for the other side. All right, And as I mentioned, I'm going to break this up really simply just in one step. So therefore. A, in this case, is equal to um, 27.5 times the sine of 24 degrees all over the sine of 108 degrees. Does everybody see how I just kind of skipped steps to show my, how my work? Here I broke down all the steps, but you guys are going to see you're going to do this over and over and over and over again. So yes, if you need to do this to find it, that's fine. But pretty soon you'll get to, you'll get to going how to skip to this step which would have been the exact same if you would have just followed along. So therefore, to solve for my side A, I do 27.5 times the sine of 24 divided by the sine of 108. And I get 11.76. Um, OK, and that's it. Got any questions, Chris? Okay.